I tried to do a demonstration of how the navigation works in a field and it didn't go to plan. I actually got mobbed by wild horses. Now, if you wanna see the outtakes of this, then I will leave this at the end of this video. So what is this video going to be about? Well, I'm just gonna select a few examples from the navigation and sort of go into a little bit more detail about them. I will give you a tutorial of how it works and show you actually how it performs going live, walking out and showing you all the different things you need to know. So first off, I want to show you the track me side and this will be using the GPS Galileo. I want to show you the data screens and the setup. I will also show you the track me settings that I've chosen. I also want to do a track me using the ultra track and just to see how sort of accurate that is. And the big one, using backtrack and uh, on the way showing you how the altimeter works and this will be using the gps galileo next i want to show you the navigate side where i will make a course using the route planning from garmin explore and show you how that is set up also on navigate i'm going to show you a sat nav custom setting that I've put together and show you how to create one of those. I'm also going to navigate to a goal and have no waypoints and this could be a points of interest I'm not sure just at the moment and I'm going to show you what it does if I take a different road and show you how it reroutes. I also like to just point out that if you do have waypoints set and you go off course, it won't calculate a different way. It will just show you how much you're off course. Before I go any further, I just wanna give a huge shout out to a fellow YouTuber called Rawson Forever. Well, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a sort of a play on word, I guess, where it, maybe it means Raw's on forever like he carries on forever. Anyway, this guy is incredible. He rides around on his own in the Alaskan part of America on his ATV and he really does tackle some interesting landscapes. And I just really find his videos really interesting and I really do admire what he does. And uh, i sure he can uh, show you some of you young guys a thing or two. So anyway, I really recommend jumping onto his channel and just give him some support. This is for you, Rawson, forever, because you are very interested in the uh, in this Phoenix and whether it's good for you or not. So hopefully this video will show you enough of what you need to know. I know that you do have the Rangeman, the GPR-B1000. So let's see if this is any better. So let's just crack on with it and get inside the Phoenix and show you some of these navigation features. First off is track me, pressing the up button here, the menu long press goes into the track me settings. So let me just show you what I have customized for myself. So the data screens here, my first screen, nice and bold is the timer and distance. Next screen is the map. And then I have a third screen showing the altimeter. Now, if I press again, I can now add a new screen. Now there's loads of loads of different customizations here. So you can really just go through it and set it up how you please. Now, if you look at my first uh, tutorial on this watch here, you'll see how I go through and adjust some of the uh, data screens. So I'm not going to go through all that today. What's the next one? I've got the routing, I've got that set to running and walking. And next, I want to show you that the GPS, I've got this set to Galileo. So that is all ready to go. 
So from track me, I'm going to show you what I have on the navigate. So long press on the up, I'm going to show you the navigate settings. Let's have a quick look at my data screens. First off is with the map. Then I have a six data layout with distance timer and elevation and estimated time. This can all be customized again to suit your needs. I have the altimeter and then I have the time of day. I thought it was always handy to have and then you can go straight to add a new one. So I'm just gonna come back out of that and I'm just going to show you that the routing is on hiking and the GPS should be set on the GPS and Galileo. From Navigate, I want to show you one I've got set up here. It's called SatNav. Now, this is a customized one, basically used while I'm in the car. So let me show you how I actually got that. So what I've chosen is Navigate, a long press on up. And then from this menu, I'm going to scroll down and look at Copy Activity. Basically, this is going to clone it and it will give it a Navigate 2 name because you can't have the same name in the list. So from here, I'm going to go up and I'm going to call it a Nav, say, I'm going to call it a Nav, yeah, Nav 7. Let's call it a Nav 7 so we know where it is on the list. So I'm going to press the tick. Now I can go into the data screens and change that. Now I want to have it very basic in this one. So I'm going to get rid of all the screens and just keep the map. It's very easy like this. You'll sort of work your way around by just how to do the shortcuts by pressing up. So I can add one or it's just that one screen. So I'm happy with that. Now I need to scroll down. I want to select the map and I want to have lock on roads because I do not want to go off road. So let's go back and then I want to change the routing. At the moment it's on hiking and I need something more. That's it. That's the one there. Perfect for my car. So now that should be perfectly set up. Just going to check. I think the GPS, yeah, GPS is on Galileo. Everything is perfect. Then when you're happy, you just press done. I could set this at my favorite, but I choose not to. So when you press no, you now have the option where to place it on your list. So let's just put it, say, under track me. You can always change this later. So just pressing that and there it is. So by pressing the up button, you have the sat nav sort of modes there. So there you go, you've got it all in there. Or you can go down the bottom here, you can see, you can set it as your favorite. You can also copy again. You can move the app around. You can remove it off the list or you can delete it completely. So go back. Now, if I press the start, I have some options. I can either go to points of interest. I can either go um, things around me, back to start. And then I have courses, which I haven't got anything. And round trip course. This is quite interesting. You can set this at the moment. It's just on bike and run. So this is just select bike. And this is the distance. I have this set to kilometers. So basically... If you wanted a very quick sort of drive around the block, uh, you can set this for five kilometers and you can choose any direction, north, east or south, or including west as well. So if I press this, what it's going to do, it's going to calculate uh, three courses. Now, this does take a little bit, but um, it's quite interesting. So what I'm going to do is going to let it calculate and show you what it looks like. And there is the first course there. It's actually calculated it to 5.1 kilometers and it's keeping it all to the road. 
Now I have a little arrow at the bottom so I can use the down and look at the second course. Second course is a little bit longer at 6.1 kilometers and the third course is still being calculated. And the last one has just been updated. So to have all three courses, it's taking roughly about a minute and a half. So it's not too bad actually. And this one is 3.7, so slightly longer. So you could just choose which one you want to do. You just press the start. You can have a look at the map. You can do turn by turn. You can see the elevation there, see what the course is up to, see if it's too hilly. We could just save it as well. So quite a few options. Now I'm not going to do a live demonstration of this, but I thought I'll just show it very quickly while it's to mind. I've just had a idea, so I'm gonna go back into navigation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clone the track me and add the ultra track to it. So if I go down, copy activity, and here I'm going to call it track me and maybe I call it ultra so I know which one it is so I don't have to mess about later and also it gives you another sort of uh, demonstration of how easy this is to set up so I'm going to call that track me ultra I'm not going to mess around with the data screens uh, the map, I've got this set with the just auto lock on road. Let's just keep it like this. Routing should be running and walking. And I need to go down to maps, the GPS, sorry, GPS. And there is the ultra track. So now I have everything in there I need. Just checking quickly and then press done. Very important, otherwise you won't save this. Uh, no, I won't. And what I shall do is slap that straight there. So now I have track me and then track me ultra for later. Next, I want to plan a route using the Garmin Explore. Now I've already covered this in my full tutorial with the downloadable instructions but I thought I'll just go through it very quickly. So, you know, it's never enough, is it? So you're gonna get a screen like this. It may not show you your location, but if you press this icon up here, it will straight take you straight to where you are and it would give you this sort of compass thing here, making you nice and giddy. Now, if you don't want that, just press that icon again and it will give you a north bearing and it's fixed. So from here, I would go to the library and I would add a new collection and then give it a name. So let me call mine, whoop, 69. Then just press OK. Now my new collection is added. Now I'm gonna go back to the map up the top left here, the little plus icon, I press this and then I'm going to make my route. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and then with a tap, it's gonna have my starting point and then I can go to the end of my road. I can actually hold on that and it will give me that little magnifying lens there. And you also have some other options where you can edit and delete. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this up here and make a little round course and show you what I've done. And then I'm back home, sort of roughly like this. So my course goes around here into a nice little foresty bit back here, some over some fields. And then I'm gonna cut through some roads at the back, going through also some public footpaths and then heading up on this road here. So it's got a little bit of a, a mix. So once that is set, then I have up here save. I'm going to press save. So that is all done. So what I can do, I can give that a name if you wanted to. So I'm going to call that a root one. So root one is typed in and I can now tap on this if I wanted to and change the color of the route. 
how about nice vivid red you can see it's all changed like this so it is quite customized bolillo so i'm going to go to my library and there is my collection i'm going to tap on that and at the bottom it has plus and then i have my root here there it is root one and then just press add and now if i go back to the library there is my new collection or my collection and there is one root added now what I do is go to device tap on that and there is my whoop 69 let's just lock that in and then hit the sync button and at the bottom you'll have some well a lot of information zapping through into the watch and then when it's complete it will come up finished sync finished it is quick as that now i just want to make sure that that course is in the watch i'm sure it is go to navigate and go to courses and there it is route one let's have a little quick look at the map and hopefully there it is all set up i can also just have a little quick zoom in as well so at the moment everything is set up on the watch i just need to get out there and show you what it's like performing this all live i thought i would do some navigational tutorials in this wonderful little forest which is literally a two minute walk from my home and I thought the good starting point would be from this rope swing and I will continue down this trail here. Now it's very, very twisty and I thought that would be perfect for this kind of tutorial. So kicking off first, I'm going to do track me. And I thought I would just start this and show you how it performs on the way around. And I will come back to the rope swing. And then I thought afterwards I would do the same course and use Ultra Track and really show you the difference. So let's give that a start. My data screen is showing timer and distance. I have the map and I have my altimeter. So let's begin. walking for 7 minutes and 42 and the distance is 0 0.43 kilometers and there is the map and it's even showing a little bit where the field is in front of me and where it's all green that is where the forest is and there is no trail to follow this is all just been naturally made by walkers that come to visit this little forest and there's my altimeter at the moment at 34 and it's got the little timer down at the bottom there and then back to that screen there i can also with a long press on up i can pan around and see what is happening a bit more with a bit more distance so that was my starting point this is on a 200 meter radius so you really get to see your overall sort of uh, distance or your route that you've traveled in the spring it is absolutely beautiful here because all the uh, flowers all the wild flowers are out and this is one of my favorite parts coming up here this is sort of reminds me of the sort of jurassic sort of stage where i am on this sort of trail and then you have this little bit of a path here it's quite sort of s shape and has a little broken tree in the middle so passing through that and then you have a lot of green foliage there the red arrow up here is my magnetic north and down here i have my little blue icon now this is always 
pointing forwards and so when I turn you see the map rotating now you can change this in settings and have it that your point rotates and the map stays stationary So I've been going for just over 24 minutes. I've traveled 1.17 of a kilometer. Just gonna have a look at the map. And there, that's where I started, this little gray arrow here. So let's have some pan and just see the overall sort of route that I've been taken. There you can see it. And if I come back out of that, and if I'm in one of the data screens, if by pressing the back button once, I can take a lap recording. So if that's something that you need to sort of do on your travel, then there it is. You can opt to have that on or off. Here's my dead cat that I'm using today to record. And so far, I haven't crossed anyone on the trail so they can look at me weird and think that I've stolen a squirrel. <laughs> so I'm nearly at the rope swing and you can see how it's drawn my route and how easy it is if you're just doing a track me how you can just come back on yourself. Just up ahead let's see how accurate it is and uh, I've got a group of crows that are sort of following me now wondering if I'm bringing any food so the rope swing is just down there and I've got a bit of a slippery bit here so hopefully I don't go flying so heel in to the mud and here is where I've started well not too bad let's have a little bit more of a zoom into where i am i can also do some panning around so let's get my point up there and move that up a little bit so it's there now i think i did start the gps was literally a few sort of steps away so maybe that is where it is so that's within 20 meters at least so that's where i started and this is where i'm at the moment and it's on seven meters on the map so not too bad at all and uh, i've noticed that the arrow is still continuing now don't forget that i am in a forest and there's lots and lots of trees so this is really really sort of pushing its limits a little bit so let me just come back out of that and press stop and here are some of the options now i can either resume i'm going to save it i can resume later i can take a lap from here and i can do a back to start but i shall do that a bit later or i can discard so at the moment i'm just going to save this and then show you what I have. So I've been walking for 33 minutes and 24 seconds. I can now scroll down and I can look at all stats. So there's the distance, 1.56 kilometers, average speed of 2.8. And don't forget that I've had to stop and do the recording. You've got ascent and descent on the altimeter side. I can also have a look at the map. There is the map all drawn out. Come back, I can have a look at my elevation as well. And that is what I was walking. So the next one I want to do, coming back out of there, I want to try the difference between the track me using Ultra, which has the Ultra track. So let me start that 
and let's compare the differences. Now that's interesting, the altimeter is now reading 99 meters. So obviously the ultra track has some kind of interference on that side. So I've been walking just over 18 minutes. I've traveled 1.16 of a kilometer and let's have a little look at the map and that's what it's drawn. Now I've only just got the straight part on the path to do before I reach the rope swing. Just coming down to the last bit before I make the turning. Now looking on the map, it's looking like it's a little bit more accurate than it was on GPS Galileo. So it's gonna be really interesting a little bit later where I just have all this data on my connected device through Garmin Connect and actually show you guys the difference. So I'm almost at the rope swing. Just watch that muddy, very muddy today. So it makes a huge difference. So here I am. I'm right at the point here. Let's have a little bit of panning and zooming and see how that's looking. Going in. And there is the difference. So it's about the same, I would say. So let's come out of that and press the stop. And then save that. like so and it's drawn its little map there and of course it's showing the same as before you can see all your stats like so and you can look at the the map as well there's the course and the elevation that was quite interesting it's showing 95 to 107 meters. I just want to show you quickly this little feature. So if I go into the navigation and I've got, say, for instance, track me. Now, if I do a long press on up, at the top here, it's going to give me my battery percentage. And it's also going to tell me that I have 34 hours worth of track me GPS. And this goes for all the settings. So if I went to track me ultra and did a long press on up it's now gone up to 42 hours of gps another cool little feature i want to show you while in say track me long press on up then you can look at me track me settings now if you go down there's one here called alerts and here i can add alert and i can make a custom one so you can have sort of speed, time and distance. And I thought, you know, if you wanted to say to walk for 10 minutes and then give you an alarm to tell you to turn back, then maybe that is something that's quite useful. You can add as many as you like or wish. And you've got custom ones here as well. So you've got drink, eat and you've got turn around and go home. The next one I want to show you is going to be backtrack and I'm going to use this through track me. So I'm just going to start to that and notice at the top here you have this bar here and when it's red it means you don't have a GPS signal and when it turns green you have a GPS signal. So let's start and uh, go through the trail and see how it copes with taking me back to the rope swing. I've been walking for nearly seven minutes. I've done a distance of 0.42 of a kilometer. And uh, of course it's drawn the map. Now, if I press the start and stop, it comes up with the stop icon. Now I can resume, save, resume later. Now I want the backtrack. So there it is, track back, press that. 
and wait for that to load. And I'm just waiting for a nice noisy helicopter to pass. So what do I have shown on the map? Well, I have at the bottom here that it's telling me that it's 428 meters to reach my goal. And what do I have on the screens? I have the altimeter and then I have a track back course bearing point. And then I have this screen here, which I will come back to. It's very cool. And now I have a data screen giving me an estimated time of arrival, a duration of minutes, timer, and some other informations that can all be customized. And then back to the very basic timer and distance. So let's have a look at the map. I'm going to press on the up. I'm going to pan and zoom. Let's have a little let's have a little pan out. Of course I've got the timer still set on the alerts. So it's drawing a red line there on the course that I need to follow. It will also when I'm walking back draw a new a route as well a new course so it's actually going to calculate this all different because I'm not actually going to have my feet in the same position position so if it's all about sort of uh, tracking your activity then you want to have it the most accurate as possible so I've now zoomed back into where I am and I can see that if I start turning around you can see that the route is in front of me like so. So now all I have to do is basically follow the course. So it's telling me to turn around here. Now it's not pinpointing on the actual path that I've taken, but it really is giving me a good idea. So that is quite muddy, that bit there. And uh, they are back on the track now that I first walked on. And remember, I am in a forest and there is a lot of trees around me. So that could all have an effect on the actual GPS accuracy. So with 307 meters to go, I'm just gonna have a look at some of the data screens. There is the track back. A bearing compass when it's facing when it's blue that means you have a connection and yes it's quite quite responsive as well and if you go off course it actually tells you how many sort of meters you are and this is the one that I really do like the where it's green this is showing what you've covered already and the blue is what's left to travel so coming down to the sort of tricky part of the of the trail so I thought I'll show you how this sort of works uh, do bear with me because I'm trying to film I'm trying not to fall over and you've got bits of tree that have fallen onto the trail as well now that did go off course a little bit but that is very very marginal and the map is quite zoomed in as well and uh, there so it's given me a really good indication of really where I should be heading so that was quite a tricky bit there and now with 162 meters to go I'm back on course I think that went off course because uh, there was quite a lot of dense trees there very muddy there right I'm really back on course now look at that really sticking to the the original trail that I took I got 58 meters to go let's see what happens at the end because normally when you do route planning it tells you that your course is complete so I haven't actually tested the track back so this is all new with you guys yeah I can see the starting point with the little grey 
icon. I can see the rope swing. 12 meters go. 10 meters. There. Five meters, three meters. Course complete. And I am at the rope swing. How cool is that? Now, the GPS will just continue to run, so you need to stop that and let's save it. There you go, it doesn't take too long to save. There you go, a bit of information there. And you can look at the map, it'll be quite interesting. There it is, look at that. Very, very cool and elevation as well and it shows you all the information like there so i'm going to have all this updated later towards the end of the video and show you what it all looks like through garmin connect now my next one i need to do is navigation through the route that i've planned navigation i need to select navigate go down to courses and there it is route one so I can look at some information on there, but I'm just going to crack on with it and do course. And course has started with a press of the start button. Now it's 2.6 uh, kilometers. And sorry, I've got, a, I've got birds and flying airplanes above me. So let's have a look at some data screens. There's the first one the altimeter there, time of day. I've also got the bearing compass there, very, very useful. And then I've got this one here where the blue is what I need to travel. So it gives you a good indication of what's up ahead. So let's just go out my gate and see how this navigates me. Now I've come to my junction. So basically I have sort of two ways I can do this. I can either do this counterclockwise or clockwise the route and uh, I found that that makes no real difference at all. The roads are all in grey and the route is in red and I can clearly see up ahead that I need to take a left and uh, it's actually marked up with a public footpath. Another nice muddy path and the bearing compass, even at this angle, is actually working, which is really good. That's very handy, so you don't have to have it level. And on this data screen here, where it's green, this is what I've traveled. So up ahead, I've got a little junction there. Because it's using a route that I've planned, it's actually going to just uh, give me the map to show me where I am on the map. Now I still have my free will of actually going off course. And of course it's building a course behind me. So I could always sort of track back on that if needed without actually pushing the backtrack. So options are quite sort of endless really. It's all down to how it works best for you. So now I'm on a bit of a, a clearance here and that's that little bit of a junction. So it's dealt with that very, very well. This is my data bearing screen here. But if I was to select another screen at the top here, you have a little red arrow and this is always pointing to the direction I need to go. It's not giving me a compass anymore. So if you're wondering why I'm doing this at this time of day, it's because tomorrow onwards for about a week it's going to rain and I'm itching and raring to go with this tutorial so I really want to show it uh, as soon as possible. Now I'm coming up to a bit of a junction and this is actually where the rope swing is so it's now telling me or showing me it's not actually telling me it's just showing me that I need to turn and you can see how the map rotates. That is really, really easy to follow. And so now 
I know where to go. I'm just going to go up on a course here. So I'm going a bit off course and that's how it puts you back on track. Now the ground is completely covered with leaves so I actually don't even know where the path is. So I'm going up a hill now and uh, it's showing that information perfectly. And it's telling me that it's going up and in kind of 15, 18 meters. And you can tell in my breath that that is a, a bit of steepness right there. I'm on the edge of the forest, a nice field. I'll say there's a little bit of uh, tree coverage here, but the GPS is still keeping me to that track. You can see it goes off just a very, very slight amount. Got a little bit of a junction up ahead or a little turning point. And uh, yes, I can see it's actually a junction. I can actually have actually got sort of four possibilities plus going back to where I came from. Now I've got to go into the more dense part of another part of the forest. So it's going to get very sort of dark in here and I have my backlight which is really good. I say the backlight you can adjust. You can get it just just so. It doesn't wash out the colors on the actual display. And I must also add that the display is incredible on the six over the five the clarity is really good the ar coating on the six is just it's oh, it makes such a big difference but then again on the five once you've got the backlight on you don't notice the reflection so much just looking on the altimeter plan here i'm about halfway now so it's all going very well light is fading quickly so i'm really trying to get this all in one go, one take should i say on sunday and i've walked and walked and i'm getting quite tired now so it looks like i'm coming to the end of the path and coming out the forest and i have a road to cross and there's a bit of a a staggered junction here so and just squeeze my body through there yeah i'm on a road and so where do i go and it's all very very confusing indeed but with the mapping it's really pinpointing and it's taking me here and yes i can see a sign that this is a public footpath now that just looked like a little cutout in the hedge and uh, really i didn't even think about looking there over halfway and i can follow the map i can actually see the red route that i've drawn and uh, looks like up ahead there is going to be another junction here it is i'm on that turning point and it is absolutely bang on so i've got a path down there i can either go straight on or down here and see how the map just rotated so let's just continue up here so one kilometer to go so i've got a bit of bogginess here and uh, let's see how waterproof my boots are the boots I'm wearing are actually made by John Cliff and they're leather and Gore-Tex and uh, I've got to say I'm impressed. You can actually see on the map it actually has point and these are the points that I've added when I was creating the route so yeah, it's kind of good to see it on there. So there's my bearing compass it's all perfectly on course and now I've done over three quarters and there so really good on that side estimated arrival is seven minutes past four so hopefully have enough light and back on the map looks like I'm going to be on a road soon and I have a little junction now I've come to the end of that road and to be honest I wouldn't have a clue where to go but because the map is pointing this way, 
this actually looks like the path I need to take. Now, if you do take the wrong path, it will indicate that. And so at least you can see that if you need to correct the course. So approaching another junction. Perfect. So the last leg of the route is all going to be on the road. So I do apologize if you hear any cars going past. And there's the overall sort of plan with the altimeter. So it's roughly in three minutes I should reach my goal. So down to the last 80 or so meters. Just gonna have a look through the data screens. It's on course. I just wanna show you this bearing compass here and show you what happens when I get to a junction. Now I should be turning now on the left but I'm just going to go straight ahead and see what happens. Just wait for the traffic. Now it's come up with 17 and so the arrow has now turned. You can see the arrow, the bearing compass arrow is telling me to go back and it's actually come up with horse complete which is very odd but the thing is I'm so close to where I need to be I, it doesn't really make any difference but course is complete so I'm just gonna stop that and save the course I'm now back and let's have a look at the the data here so all stats so 2.72 kilometers in total, 41 minutes, average speed of four kilometers. There's some calories that have been burnt and, oops, a bit wobbly, ascent and descent. And let's have a look at the map, show the course, and there it is. That's what I've just done. I'm now in my car and I want to do some navigation while driving and I found something quite interesting. So when I go into the navigation side, I have this one here, which I put together called the sat nav. Now, if I went there and then say went to points of interest and chose fuel services, now I'll just wait for that to load up and it's actually quite quick. Now I do like the animation on this side, so just waiting for that to load up and there it is. Now I'm going to pick a particular one here. It's called the MS Simply Food. It's 4.8 kilometers away. So I press on there and then press go. Now look what it's doing. It's not doing a turn by turn. It's actually just drawing a straight line get some pan and zoom onto that. And you can see from where I am, it's just drawing a bearing line all the way to the petrol station there, the fuel station. So if I come out of this and go to navigate and do the same, points of interest and go down to fuel services, now it takes just a little bit longer for it to upload and there is a good reason why. And now I'm in. So if I go to the same filling station, this one here, and then press go, look what happens now when it's calculating. It does take a little time. And there I've got an arrow and now it is on the roads. It looks like that is giving me what I need with the turn by turn. So if I pan out, you can see it's actually drawing a route sticking to the road. So what are the differences? So in navigate with a long press on up, I can go into the navigate settings. Now I just want to show you if I go into map, I have auto zoom. See, I have lock on road 
actually turned off. And if I go into the routing side, you can see I've got this switched on to run in walk in. Also, I have this one here, this popular routing, and this is off. But watch this. If I go back out and go to the one that I've put together and then have a look at those settings. So I've got the map. Now this doesn't make sense. I've got that lock on road. And when I come back and I go to routing, I've got this on car, but notice the popular routing is switched off. So if I go into this one and choose, and I have played around with this. Now, if I do running and walking, you see I now have this option enabled. Well, the option to turn it off and on. So when I come back out and then select the points of interest going down to the fuel services and wait for that to load up. It doesn't take too long. Okay, now selecting the same one. There it is. Now watch what happens. Then it starts calculating. Now it takes a little bit longer and then it comes up like so. And it looks like it's drawn the map. And here it's actually got the amount of meters or distance till I need to travel to the junction or turning. And then it will give you a little tone like you've just heard and the watch also vibrates. And look, it's given me an indication of an arrow where to go and also the route on the road. So I have a little pan and zoom just to show you why is it so if I haven't got it on auto or automobile, why does it just do a straight line? Why is it when I've got it on hiking that it gives me this turn by turn sort of navigation? Anyway, so that is a little thing that I've just found out. So what I'm going to do is just leave it on the setting I have and uh, see how it navigates me there. And I'm also going to take some wrong turnings and uh, see if it reroutes me back on course. So all I need to do now is press the start and let's see how it navigates me. I've also, at this point, got the backlight set on as always. And this is all adjustable in the backlight settings, of course. So let's put some lights and get going. I'm also gonna do some dash cam footage as well. So you get a sort of an idea of where I'm driving. So I'm now coming up to a junction and yes, it's clearly clearly indicated that I need to turn right. So let's go this way. And again, it's telling me I need to take this turn in. And it's even given me an indication. So this is very easy to follow. I'm now coming up to a, another junction. And now I can see where I need to go. I'm trying, there we go, trying to turn. There's another junction. So that was quite tricky. So it indicated with a tone and some vibration when I need to take note. So it's telling me I need to turn up ahead and that was interesting because that was actually a private well not private a public footpath and i can't drive my car on a public footpath so what's it going to do now and what's it going to calculate now it's telling me that i need to go further at 1.7 kilometers up ahead at around about sort of 200 meters it's wanting me to do something. Now, the road, oh, it's really beeping at me now. The road has now gone into a two lane. We call it a dual carriageway here in England. 
and now it wants me to take another turn in and again it wants me to go down a road that is no entry and will probably end up on a footpath so it's calculating it's calculating I've now got the roundabout up ahead it's obviously trying to calculate it as if I was really walking or running it's actually telling me to go the opposite way around the roundabout really really, <laughs> really silly lock on road does that mean that it's going to stick to this side that you drive I mean here in England we're pretty dumb and we drive on the left side and not the right side and again it's telling me to turn up ahead going to a road which is basically not going to take me anywhere maybe points of interest isn't what I need maybe I need to point on the map maybe that calculates it a little bit better so let me try something a little bit different so I'm going to go to navigate and I'm going to use the map this time so I'm here so let me just find somewhere random and uh, going up so how about around about there okay so once you've got a sort of a, a rough sort of idea where you want to go just hold down on this start button will give you the road so here I can press go and now it's calculating like so so I'm ready to start I'm actually in a nice hotel called the Bull Hotel so it's telling me to turn so I've got that and then I need to turn down this road yeah that's all very good so now I've purposely taken the wrong road and I want to see what it's doing now it's telling me to turn back so what happens if I continue recalculating it still wants me to go back in England it never rains it just pours I'm at a junction and it's just telling me to turn around so now I'm almost at the point where I left and I cannot make I cannot make out what this um, what is happening it's all upside down it's telling me it's really really not working I'm now going to turn this option here this popular routing I'm going to turn that on and see so in routing I'm going to choose road cycling and I'm so what, what do I do what, what do I do how do I how do I make this work Garmin are you listening are you looking look lock on road routing how about a motorcycle and let's press go calculating yeah it's drawn a straight line that's on a motorcycle on a motorcycle Garmin on a motorcycle you're just drawing a straight line direct routing what does that do does that work it's drawing another straight line looking at the map system settings I'll just turn that on or off and go what does that do another straight line I'm now going to try the very last one and it's called 
around me. Conclusion, it ain't working, it ain't working. So I don't know what automobile, mobile, automobile, batmobile, auto, auto, automobile, auto, automobile. Why do they call it automobile? What, what, what? Garmin, listen, don't call it an automobile. No one calls it an automobile. It's called a vehicle. Call it a vehicle. Let's see. What have I got over here? Let's have a little look. Uh, I've got some parking. Oh, I can just go home. So let's go to home. There we go. You're going to calculate it. You're going to work it out. Right. Let's see if you can take me home. Just put the seatbelt on. Garmin, what are you going to do? Where are you going to take me? Where are we going? What's happening? Junction. I don't live up there. What are you taking me up there for? I've really tried every combo. Yeah, if you want to play that low game. Arriving home. I probably was pushing the navigation side a little bit hard while driving, but it did give you an idea of how it sort of performed. And Garmin, if you're listening, I'm sure there could be an odd tweak here or there and make it actually so that you could really use it like a little mini sat nav. But if you really needed to use it while in the car, then you could possibly make it work. I mean, it wasn't following the sort of turn by turn because it wanted to take me down some of the public footpaths. But if you put it on to the one where it does the straight line, at least you have a really good indication of how far away you are. Next, I want to transfer all the data on the Phoenix to Garmin Connect. So now all the data has been transferred to Garmin Connect. So I need to go to my profile here and here I will have a list of all my activities. Now the one I'm interested in, and I'm sure you are, is the track me using the GPS Galileo and track me using the Ultra Track. So let's have a look at this information. And so I have the time, I have the distance and some calories. I also have a nice plan of what I did. I also have some information. I can go up here, I can look at the speed and I can look at the elevation. Now I just want to point out that you remember that the differences were quite big between the Ultra Track and GPS Galileo. Well the reason why is because I went to the forest with the watch turned off and when I turned it on, it still had the old altimeter reading from where I turned it off. So now I can look at the top toolbar up here. I can also get some further information by looking at, say, the average speed and the average moving speed, which is interesting to have. This is on track me using the GPS and Galileo. So ignore the time. Look at the distance. That is one 0.56 kilometers and when I swipe over to track me using the ultra track it's on 1.46 and then looking at the map with track me GPS Galileo and comparing that to track me ultra track I have to say that the ultra track isn't too bad but with the GPS and Galileo you're just getting that much more of detailing the data on the Phoenix was also automatically updated to Garmin Explore and here it is and there is all the activity I did in the forest. Now if I go at the bottom toolbar and tap on library I have a list like so. So if I go on the first one this was with track me using the GPS and Galileo and then going back I have the track me using the ultra track. Now I can tap on the icon up here and I can give it another color. So maybe I want that in red. So there is the overlay. 
and then going back and this one here this is when I did the track back and you can also tap on here and give it the your own name as well and uh, I think I might change the color on that one too so there it is in green so when I come back out and go to map I can see the overlays much much more clearer now I haven't covered every single tiny detail with regards to the navigation otherwise this wouldn't be just over an hour long this will probably be 42 hours the minimum anyway I hope this gives you a really good idea of how powerful this new Phoenix 6 Pro is and as always that's the time thanks for watching Bag. No, no, I don't want you in my camera bag. There's no food in my face. And don't poo over my camera equipment either. I appreciate that. Yes, hello. You can't eat that. Don't lick. Don't. Oh, you did. Oh, thank you. It's taken me ages to clean that lens. And now you've steamed everything up. So this is uh, this is my new friend here. He's coming to help. He's um, uh, apparently very good, very good with uh, the tripod. Yeah, can you adjust that all for me, can't you? You can. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, he's very nosy, and uh, he wants to be in the shot. So let's have a have a selfie. Yeah. You. No, not the camera. Not the cap. Please, not not the camera. Yeah, you're just gonna, just gonna stand there, and your nose is just in shot. Uh, you want to be in the shot? <laughs> now I've got this one. Hello. I think I'm not going to be doing any filming today, am I? Anyway, guys, it was lovely meeting you. Great conversation. Very, uh, very chatty. Thanks. Great. And um, I bid you a lovely grass munching day and I'm sure I will catch up with you lot again and next time I shall bring some apples so uh, hi there again okay I'm being uh, tracked now and horses are surrounding me so I want to see how easy this is don't knock my tripod over okay thanks boys Wow, got a lot of them around me. So let's get the uh, navigation going. I'm just going to use track me and uh, press start. And uh, let's, uh, let's see if I can get them to follow me. Right, come on boys, follow me. Let's go, let's go for a track me. Come on, come on. <coughs> boys, don't knock my tripod over. Right, let's just have a little wander up here and uh, I can show you my data screens. Now these data screens can be customised and if you watch my full tutorial I show you how to do that. So at the moment I've got the timer and distance, I have a map and I have the altimeter and back to that. Uh, first screen. So what I was just going to do is have a little wonder, a sort of a bit all over the place. The horses are really intrigued with my camera down there with the tripod. I just hope they haven't eaten anything down there. I've got my bag and not too far away either. So it's a little bit hilly here quite a crisp afternoon yeah they seem to really like my tripod set up down there I can't, no, can't see a camera being eaten at the moment 
so I gonna stop and do some panning in let's have a look so that's my sort of course at the moment I'm running I'm sort of just doing a little like zigzag pretending that I am traveling many many kilometers so I'm just going to reach a point about here I think let's have a look at some data screens now distance is uh, 0 0.15 kilometers and so if I if I stop that now I have some options I can resume I can save resume later take a lap and the one I want is the track back so basically what this does it just shows your bearing compass and if I turn around I actually get to see the route that I've just walked on so it's obviously in the right wrong direction there so I want to go back here and I'd say it is it is actually foolproof and I'm just going to show you that if I just walk a straight line towards where my starting point is or where my camera is or hopefully my camera is still there um, it actually draws a line as well so so if you go off course at least you know where you've been it's come up with a finish flag and it's telling me that it's so many meters 90 something meters so I'm now walking back I think my camera is on the floor thanks boys and they're probably eating it away and I'm well oh, I think I've just stepped in some horse poo yes my camera is laying on the floor thanks thanks boys thanks <clears throat> now there's nothing more to see there and so once I've reached my uh, goal it comes up with course complete so let's pick my camera up and you've licked it to death haven't you great thanks boys thank you